If you've been around the block more times than the average toddler, you will no doubt be familiar with such historical events as the Salem Witch Trials, the Inquisition, the Crusades, Prohibition, the Holocaust, the Cultural Revolution, and so on and so forth. If you're over the age of 25, you might also be familiar with more recent things like the War on Terror, the War on Drugs, and the Satanic Panic. And if you've spent more than a nanosecond on the Internet at any point during the last five or ten years, you'll have absolutely encountered the terms culture war and cancel culture. The commonmost denominator is that each and every one of these events, at least ostensibly, was the product of some form of moral conflagration, whether their flashpoint being to root out the witches, the heretics, the Satanists, the terrorists, or whatever other politically charged buzzword was in vogue that year. The end result is and was always the same. A period of wanton, zealous persecution, resulting in an excessive slew of politically and socially motivated purges that invariably create far more problems than they'd supposedly meant to solve, and cause far more damage to the society than they were billed as being meant to cure. Now, unless you were literally born yesterday, I know for a fact that you've heard some variation on all that before, and so, if you know my channel rules, you may be wondering what my proposed novel angle on it might be, and in answer to that, I'd have you take careful notice that, of the on-screen chart, the methods of forced moral realignment listed in the left-hand slice are predominantly instigated, though almost never directly perpetrated, by women, and the right-hand side are predominantly instigated and perpetrated by men. Why is that, you may wonder? My postulation is that it comes down to the difference between how men and women traditionally express agency and assert authority within society. In short, women gain and wield social power through manipulation and guile, whereas men wield the power through physical force and or threat of force, with the enabling factor of the former being the latter and the motivating factor of the latter being the former. In essence, while men have, and still do, predominantly take on the role of enforcing broad-scale laws and external barriers, women historically have held the equally important task of maintaining their society's internal moral fabric. Why? Well, for one, it was traditionally their task to properly induct children into the culture, and for another, it often fell to the females to sound the alarm if a predator had infiltrated the camp or if a virulent growth was threatening to destabilize the community hence why they are the more likely sex to start screaming when startled, and why men are instinctually hardwired to hearken to said distress call with all haste. In other words, men are now, as they were then, the community's horns, scales, and muscles, while women were its endocrine, immune, and central nervous systems. But what causes these coaxial systems to go so awry as to, in the wake of their misfiring, produce the Salem witch trials, the culture war, or income tax? Well, a number of things, but the one which I will devote this segment to, as I believe it is the element that garners the least attention elsewhere, is the simple fact that, by and large, men and women have fundamentally exclusive value sets, and consequently parallax alignments of principle. Now, I won't belabor that point too much here and now, as I already have another whole video up where I drill more into it, and another much longer one coming down the pipeline, so all I'll say on it at present is that, as men and women have antithetical mating strategies, meaning that in order for one sex to predominantly win the mating game, a plurality of the other would have to lose what they want out of life, and by extension society are necessarily worlds apart. Hence why we see a global trend of political dissension happening along gendered lines. But as I've said, that's a topic for another time. So until that time, consider checking out my books, remember to vote in the community poll, along with all the other YouTuber blabber as well, and of course, as always, stay safe, stay sane, keep your eyes open and your wits about you, and I'll see you around real soon. Peace.